Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another story time. If you're down here in the Driftless, it is kind of a cold and rainy day, and it feels a lot like fall today. But I've also been out in nature recently, and I've been seeing some signs of fall. Have you been seeing any signs of fall? What kind of things have you been seeing that makes you think fall is coming? One of the things I saw this morning was a huge flock of very noisy geese that went over my house this morning. There must have been over a hundred of them. It's the biggest one I've seen yet this year. Another thing I've been seeing a lot of that is another sign of fall is a lot of flickers. Does anybody know what a flicker is? They're actually called northern flickers and they are a bird in the woodpecker family. But instead of pecking on the trees and getting their food or the insects that they eat from the trees, they actually get them from the ground, so you'll see them hopping along the ground, pecking at the ground to find delicious insects to eat. But in the winter, would a flicker be able to find food here? No, the ground is too frozen for our flickers to find food. So most of our animals, it's easy to think that they migrate because it gets cold out, but most of our animals migrate to find food because their food is no longer available here. If you think, I have, you can see birds flying in my bird feeders back here, some of those birds are gonna stay all winter long. So they can live here even when it's really cold, their feathers keep them warm. But other birds like our flickers are gonna migrate to where they can find food in the winter. All right, what else have I been seeing that makes us think of fall? The other day I went for a walk and I saw 15 monarch butterflies and six of those monarchs were all in the same tree, in a big group in the tree. So when it's super cold out, our butterflies might not be able to fly, so you might find them in big groups in trees, but they are on their way, super far away, and we're gonna find out where in our book today. But if you know it, where are they going? We'll see if you're right when we read. But our monarchs are one of our smallest migrators, right? They have a really long journey for an insect. That's pretty cool, and we'll read more about them today. So you can probably guess what our theme for story time today is. It is migration. So we're going to read this book. It's called Amazing Animal Journeys. Um, and it was written by Chris Packham and illustrated by Jason Cockcroft. Okay. This book is going to take us on some of the journeys from animals all around the world. Some of them we might not have here. Um, and some of them might look pretty familiar to you. So let's read and find out shift you here a little. So before we even begin reading, we can see some of the animals we're going to learn about and where they're from. So they're from all over the world. We talked about our monarch butterflies here in North America. Maybe we'll look more at this map at the end. I don't want to give it all away. Every year, billions of animals move from one part of the planet to another. Birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects fly, run, or swim around Earth. This is known as migration. This is showing a barn swallow going all over. Some migrate south in the winter to avoid the cold and to be sure of finding enough food to survive until the spring. Other animals travel to find mates or the best places to breed and have their young. So this is showing us a Buick swan and an eel migrating. Not all animals migrate long distances or in huge numbers. Some only come down from the mountains to the seaside, like the red deer or move from the countryside into towns, like the pied wagtail. But wherever you live, you will be able to see migrating animals, like the barn swallow. Would you like to see, meet some of the masters of migration? The harbor seal. Everything about the blue whale is big. It's the largest creature to have ever lived on Earth, and it has a big appetite, too. Cold polar seas swarm with animal life, and every day, the adults can each eat more than three tons of food. They have to migrate to warmer tropical waters to give birth, 
so the young whales don't get too cold. But don't worry, the little ones grow quickly, and in spring, the whole family heads back for a massive meal. Sardines are small fish that travel in big numbers. Shoals of billions swim up the coast of Africa, but many of them end up in the stomach of hungry whales. Fishermen catch sardines too, and because so many get caught in their nets, these fish have begun to disappear. This is bad news for the animals that eat them, especially the poor whales. That's a bummer. A seawater lake on an island in the Pacific Ocean is home to golden jellyfish. So that's pretty weird. It's a lake, but it has salt water instead of fresh water in it. Every day, millions of these animals swim from one end of the lake to the other and back again. Hmm. So it's a very short migration, but without it, they would all die. The jellyfish follow the sun because they have tiny plant-like algae living inside of them that get energy from sunshine. It's this energy that keeps the jellyfish alive. That's pretty cool. That's showing us the parts of, a, of the jellyfish. So the epidermis or the skin of the jellyfish. And this in, in, in the middle piece here is the stomach. And then it's called the oral arms or the mouth part. So it uses those oral arms, its mouth arms to grab food and eat it. Jellyfish are also the favorite food of some extraordinary reptiles, the leatherback turtles. Every few years, they paddle back to a special beach to breed, using a strange third eye on the top of their head as a compass to help them find their way. I don't know if you can see it in the picture there, the third eye. The turtles choose beaches that are safe and have shallow sandy shores that they can climb and dig their nests into. So these turtles like to eat jellyfish, which is why it's really bad when our plastic bags end up in the ocean, because when they're floating in the sea, they look almost exactly like jellyfish. So a lot of our sea turtles are eating our plastic garbage. Make sure your garbage is getting to the right spot. And try not to use plastic bags if you don't have to. There is never snow on Christmas Island as it's in the warm Indian Ocean. But once a year, when heavy rain falls, millions of red crabs scuttle out of the forest and down to the sea to breed. The crabs cover the roads and can puncture car tires, whoa, with their tough shells if people drive over them. Special crab wardens help the crabs cross and get safely to the sea. That would be a really interesting job to be a crab warden? Neat! Migrating animals face other dangers too. They need to watch out for creatures that eat them. Wildebeest roam in huge herds on the flat, grassy savannas of Africa. Because wildebeest soon eat all the grass, they must migrate to new spots so their young ones can find plenty of food. This is a very perilous journey, as there are many animals waiting for them. Hmm, so who are some of these animals we see? A lion, a hyena, a cheetah, and a crocodile. All might want to eat a wildebeest. Some, such as crocodiles, have been waiting a year for this chance of a meal. Wow, so they might not eat for a whole year. Where there's plenty of food, some animals will gather in huge numbers. In, ca in a cave in Texas, there are 20 million free-tailed bats. Each night, they fly out to eat tons of moths, beetles, and other insects. In the winter, they all migrate south from the USA to find the warmer weather that these insects like too. So you can actually go to the entrance of this cave and sit and watch and wait for all these bats to fly out and it takes a really long time to get 20 million bats out of a cave. Staying warm is very important to many animals 
But how can something as tiny and fragile as a monarch butterfly flutter all the way from the cold of Canada to the heat of Mexico? It's because they have powerful wings to fly high in the sky and faster than you can run. So we're not as fast as a monarch. The butterflies go all the way to the mountains of Mexico for winter. We think their antenna tell them which way to go. They are like a built-in compass. Cool. Until recently, many birds would fly to Africa for the winter. However, due to climate change, some birds, such as black caps from Central Europe, now visit Britain. The change in climate looks like it will be having a big effect on migrations all over the world. Maybe in your lifetime, some animals will stop traveling altogether, and others will start their own remarkable journeys. In spring, black caps that spend the winter in Britain return home first. They get the best spots and survive better than other birds that fly south. So that is going to help change the pattern of these birds. If the birds that are just going to Britain are doing better than the birds that are going all the way to Africa, eventually we're going to see a change in the behavior of those birds. And climate is tied to so many things. It's tied to our weather and um, plant growth and what foods are available for animals in our area. So as climate changes, some places are getting hotter, some places are getting colder, some places are getting more rain and some are getting less. That affects all the plants and animals that are living there and it's gonna affect what our animals do in those areas. So we're gonna see some changes in migration routes in our lives. All right, discover more. I won't read through all these, but we'll go through the animals that we saw. So we saw barn swallows, Buick swans, black caps, so a lot of our birds are migrating. There are tons of birds here that are migrating in Minnesota right now, huge migrations. And I'll post, um, one of the resources I'll post is this thing from eBird where you can actually see migration maps of birds moving around in the country and it's pretty cool. Then we met the blue whale, our largest animal and our biggest migrator in the oceans. Um, our Christmas Island red crabs, they have a very short migration but lots of them go all at one time. Eels, bats, my favorite. Golden jellyfish, another short migration. Sea turtles, monarchs, I'll post another resource where you can track the monarch migration. And if you see a monarch, you can actually report it to this website and that helps them build their map. Pied wagtails and red deer, sardines, harbor seals, and wildebeests are all migrators that were in our story today. So I will post a link down below with some migration resources for you. And if you want to get in any projects where you can help track an animal's migration. I'll put those links in there too. But otherwise, when you're out in nature, just be on the lookout because there's a lot of things moving around right now. Even if animals aren't migrating, a lot of our animals are starting to get ready then to prepare for winter here. And that means either building up a large food supply so they can eat it all winter long, or eating a lot of food now so they can build up a big fat layer that's going to keep them warm all winter long. So our animals are on the move they're very active so keep your eyes open when you're out on your walks and let us know what you find i will be gone for the next two weeks but don't worry i'm going to record some story times so we'll see you back here next week wednesday at one o'clock for another story time bye